Good morning, friends. Uh, today we will be discussing about a topic which is usually untouched, and that is called as a instability of the elbow. Elbow instability is one of a very complex topic for an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, I'll just uh, try to summarize it and I try to explain uh, you in a very simple language. Uh, what is elbow instability and what are the important ligaments for that? So elbow has two groups of ligament. The one group is a medial ligamentous complex and the other is a lateral ligamentous complex. The medial ligamentous uh, complex is a stronger and a stouter ligament complex as compared to the lateral ligamentous complex. The medial ligamentous complex is formed by the anterior bundle which is the main bundle, the posterior bundle. The posterior bundle is usually taught in flexion. The anterior bundle is taught in both extension as well as the flexion. Now the important thing uh, for this is that medial ligamentous complex or the ulnar collateral ligament or the medial collateral ligament is the primary restraint to the varus. So even if you have a fracture in the radial head, it will not cause instability unless you have a tear of the mid ulnar collateral ligament or the medial collateral ligament. So that is a very very important structure and it is a primary restraint to varus instability. The anterior and posterior bundles together will also uh, give some kind of a posterior medial rotatory instability but that is a minor role. So the primary role is a pre, uh, uh, is to prevent the varus instability in the valgus instability in the elbow. So okay, there, it is very very rare to have injuries for the medial um, ligamentous complex but occasionally you may get injuries which are pertaining to the uh, ulnar collateral ligament, ulnar collateral ligament avulsions or ulnar collateral ligament injuries. These injuries are very well, much common in throwing athletes, specifically ball, baseball players. You must have heard about the patients who are uh, doing, uh, who uh, are baseball players, pitchers and who have this kind of a lesion. And these lesions can be addressed with uh, procedures which is called as a Tommy John surgery or this surgery was described by Jobs and it includes or it uh, incorporates the use of a pomeris longus tendon and uh, we uh, create a new anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament by use of the palmaris uh, tendon. The tendon is used in a figure of 8 fashion from the sublime tubercle to the medial epicondyle and occasionally the results are so good that the, uh, the patients are able to pitch to a better level as compared to a pre-injury level. So it is a successful surgery and can be planned in a selective cases. These injuries is usually thereby uh, addressed mostly in a reconstructive manner. So it's a ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction which is normally performed. So this is a small view. There are different techniques to do this surgery. The basic concept is you go through the sublime tubercle, go through the middle uh, epicondyle and you can uh, repair it in a figure of 8 fashion. Most commonly you can use either, um, you can use a suture technique, you can use a small uh, button kind of a thing or you can uh, tie it over its, itself. So fixation me uh, method or you can use a docking technique using a knotless anchor. So it depends, the fixation technique depends on you. But by and large, an anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament can be addressed well with a reconstructive procedure. You should not use a graft which is uh, more than palmaris because a very thick, uh, it is a very uh, small structure and you don't need a thicker graft like a gracilis or something like that. And it is a by and large it is a successful and safe procedure. Now we will come to the lateral instability. The lateral instability is usually seen in el elbow dislocations and it can be a part of uh, terrible triad. And it usually happens with an axial load, supination and a valgus load. Now lateral ligamentous complex is composed of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament which is the main ligament uh, for the, this structure. The other parts are the annular ligament and the radial collateral ligament. The role of radial collateral ligament and annular ligament is less but the role of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament is more. So these, these injuries, so now we must uh, realize that lateral ulnar collateral ligament is the primary restraint to the posterior lateral rotatory instability that is the PLRI group. This is not a restraint to the varus instability. This is a very important concept. The varus instability is usually uh, the primary restraint to that is a alnohumeral articulation. It is not the uh, ligaments on the lateral side. And the lateral sided ligament are usually weaker than the middle side ligament. So when there is a uh, uh, elbow dislocation, the, the pattern of injury starts from the lateral side 
it goes proceed to the anterior uh, tissue like in the terrible triad you will have the lateral ligamentous injury you can have a radial uh, tear radial uh, neck fractures or radial head fractures then it will go to anterior capsule then it will go to coronoid fractures and then very occasionally you will have a mcl or a medial uh, uh, collateral ligament or ulnar collateral ligament injuries so this is a very important concept so it's a weaker weaker ligament and it usually causes a posterior lateral rotator instability it does not cause a pure lateral instability or a pure varus instability so there are four stages the first is a reduced the first is a very small uh, uh, sort of a plri then it can be a purged or it can be a total dislocation and this is as i told you is a some of it may be a part of terrible triad so the stage 1 is a posterior lateral subluxation of the ulna with uh, tearing of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament the stage 2 is an incomplete dislocation with coronoid pulsed into the trochlea lucl is torn lcl is torn and anterior and posterior uh, uh, capsule is torn and it, it is in the stage 3 when the anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament is torn that there is a complete dislocation and there is a coronoid uh, fracture which is posterior to the the coronoid actually goes posterior to the humerus that is a true dislocation so lateral ligament can also be addressed through a standard uh, lateral ligament reconstruction this is done in chronic cases occasionally when there is not that much of uh, uh, instability and it is a primary grade 1 or grade 2 of a rotator instability you can use a anchor repair also in that case you put an anchor on the lateral um, uh, side of the uh, humerus and then you can pass some sutures through the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and usually that will take care of the problem so now this is very important as i told you the position of the immobilization is very important and it is the thumb should lie on to the stronger ligament so if you have a lcl tear with a intact mcl or intact ulna collateral ligament then you have to uh, you have to immobilize in a pronation usually these all uh, elbow instability elbow dislocations are unstable in extension and stable in flexion so you have to stabilize them in flexion if you are able to do a very good repair of the lcl in your surgical thing and you have done a good job and you have not touched the mcl then you have to immobilize them in a full supination position supination and flexion position so that is a position that we give if there is a good repair following a terrible triad lcl has been repaired very well and we have not touched the mcl so this is by and large the philosophy regarding these ligaments i'll i'll repeat once again lcl is a weaker ligament then lcl and in a usually the dislocation the zone of the, the the sequence of the injury is lateral ligamentous complex radial head fractures anterior capsule coronoid and occasionally very occasionally you will have a uh, injury to the mcl or the uh, ulnar collateral ligament so if you have any more doubts